Well, hi, my name is Rafael Rocha, um, um, and today I'm going to be talking about testing. So here are my credentials. I'm a senior software engineer in the Real Real. So in the Real Real, we sell luxury consignment products. And the good news is that we are hiring and we are going to open office here in Stockholm. So if you want to work with us and also with some guys from Platform Attack, just call, come and, and talk with me after this. I'm also a former consultant in Pl Platform Attack, where I worked four years, and a former engineer in LG Electronics, where I hope I also worked four years, supporting uh, partners to deliver smart TV apps. So. That's the agenda for today. So I'd like to talk a little bit about specifications and software development, a little bit about why testing, some basic and really important uh, test concepts, uh, like type of tests, test pyramid, test clarity. And uh, I think the coolest part of this presentation will be this use case that I'm going to exercise those concepts and talking a, bit, a little bit about outside the approach, refactoring, test doubles, and doc tests. So when we start to use this story, uh, we usually read the description, the exception criteria, and start coding. However, I will bring the specification to the code. So how many times you guys read this specification, try to bring to the code, to, to map, to do this map, and also bring this business logic to the code, and also for your tests? Another question is like, are you confident about your deliverables? Are you confident that you, the things they are delivering will work as expected in production? So that's coming with another question, why testing? For me, testing is really important to be self-confident. Self-confident that the things they are doing will work as expected, and you are not causing any issues in production. At the same time, it helps me a lot to organize my thoughts while developing, so I always trying to do a TDD and then let the test guide me through the, this development. And in the end, uh, if we have a good test suite, we can reduce the cost because we are not going to break production when we have a new feature because we already have tests covering, covering the, the whole application. And the, in the end, what do we have? Quality. So what are the types of tests? So we have here the acceptance test. Uh, usually it expresses a user scenario, it's more end-to-end, -end, close to the UI, they are slower, but they guarantee external quality. So how does that work? So we are trying to do a test that will, do, that will map the whole flow. So like, once a user click on a button, and then we receive the response back. But a lot of things happen when we do that. Maybe calling external API, uh, getting something in data database, and send an email, and that's why it's costly. Another type of test, and where is the integration test? And it tests between acceptance and unit, and tests the behavior of two or more entities. So we are testing the, the, me the message exchange between one or more module, and usually here is where the most of problems live. And we also have the unit test. Test the behavior of, of one entity, early detect mistakes, run faster, guarantee internal quality, and are easier to fix mistakes. So with those three types of types of tests, we have this test pyramid. This picture is really important because if you have this picture in mind, it will help a lot while developing something. So in the top of pyramid, the tests are more fragile, they are slow and guarantee external quality, but in the bottom we have like, a f they are less fragile, faster and guarantee internal quality. So try to keep this picture in mind while developing and while <coughs> writing your tests. You're gonna see that Many parts of your application need to be tested, and if you keep this picture in your mind, it will help you a lot while developing. So, this is the example that I'd like to bring today. So, imagine that we have an app called Greenbox. So, what is Greenbox? It's an online store that sells organic beauty products where users can choose a different variety of products and build its own box. So we have a stock that changes price every 10 minutes due to our crazy promotions. 
So let's practice a little bit. So we have a user story to start doing this. First, MVP. So as a user, I want to fetch products from abcdprice.com so that we can store the current name, price, and given a product. So the separate criteria is all ID, product name, price should be fetched time to time. The product name should be capitalized. The price should be in dollar format, like this one. So basically what we have to do, three main tasks, right? Fetch products from the API. Build a structure with ID, capitalizing name and price. Build an interface to consume this data. So the, let's, I really like the use the outsiding approach because it's like you have an onion and you are going deeper and deeper and deeper until you get the final result what you want. So you build this first layer, the first interface, mock it, test it, and then go a little bit deeper and deeper. And then you can guarantee that all the layers of your system are being tested. And at the same time, you're receiving a feedback of your code time to time. So what's the, the primary outside layer for this example here is build interface to consume this data. So we need a way to, to fetch this data. So let's do that. To, product, to, to fetch these products time to time, we are going to use a Jinx server. So what's a Jinx server? Jinx server is a process like any other process in Elixir, and it can be used to keep state, execute code, asynchronous, and so on. So in that case, we are going to use Jinx server just to exercise a little bit, and, this, and that's why it's a common question how to test a Jinx server in Elixir, and I'd like to bring some different solutions how you can solve that. So this is our green, green box app with this price updater. We start with uh, empty list, uh, empty state, and we initialize it. And we have this public interface called list products, where we are going to fetch this initial state that it's only the first layer of our system, a way to fetch this data. It's empty, it's very simple, and let's do the next step. Fetch products then from the API. So let's start f fetching these products. Instead of using this empty, uh, Empty list, we are going to fetch the products and also schedule work to do that time to time. Remember in the beginning I told you that we need to fetch this 10, in 10 to 10 minutes, the price change. So that's why what you're going to do now. So we fetch products, we have a schedule to fetch this time to time, and also we have this private function here to get this data from this external API. Cool. So the last part. We need to build this structure with ID, capitalized name, and price. Uh, instead of now fetching the, the products directly, we are going to build, we, finish, we are create a new CR state to build the products, and with a schedule work. In schedule work, we get this time to time, these products, and also every time we fetch this list of products, we are going to transform it, capitalize its name, uh, also change the price format. And, be, and as a result, we are going to have this map with ID, name, and price. So how can we test that? How can we test the Jinx server? So it's a common question in community, and we need to be aware that we are not going to test the Jinx server callbacks. So if you are not, so in this case, how we can do that? So really, a uh, thing that we can do here is change our design. Things are kind of messy here. Everything is signed off the Jinx server. And what we can do is like create a new design for, for this code and starting testing this part separately. So what we are going to do right now is the product fetcher. So we are going to create an integration test to ver validate this, this layer. So in the beginning, I talk a little about the specifications into code. And when I'm writing tests, I really like to, to try these specifications and in, in, in put inside of code. So for example, in here, we have uh, the description of the test is like given a request to fetch a list of products. And the test here builds a, builds a list of products with ID, capitalized name, and price in dollar. So in the end, what we are doing, we are fetching this information from the API. And at the same, same time, we are transforming it. So we expect this final transformation will be a list of maps like this one. And another test we can do is like to validate the price, if the price is returning in an expect format. So we have this reject to validate the format. 
cool. So we, we tried, once we were reading the user story, we tried to bring this to the code, and then it can guide you later or someone when reading this code, and then it will help uh, these guys to understand better what's the main purpose of this, this module. So we have here, after having this test, we have this new product fetcher with this uh, public interface called build, and also we have two internals called fetch products and process products. The ones that were inside of the, the Jinx server, now it's living here. And then let's go a little bit further and see that we can refactor a little bit more. And <clears throat> see guys that uh, we, we have this private method, but it looks like more a product. So it's, we can create an entity only responsible for this product. So we can have methods for capitalizing price uh, being part of the entity of the product. And what we can do here, unit test for that. Given a product, transform its name by capitalizing that. You see here that I'm using setup, exercise, verify. So you're seeing very clear the phase of the test. So we have a setup, very clear. We usually break, break lines to, to show that. And uh, usually we have teardown also, but the teardown is another phase, and usually it's, it's used to restore the state of the, the test before running. So in the beginning we have product, product name, it's how the API is giving this format for us. And then we exercise, so we call this function called a capitalized name, and then we verify if it's uh, working as expected. The same for pricing. We have the setup with initial price <coughs> as, a no, as a number. And then we exercise with price for money and ch change in a streaming format like this one. Cool. So we made the integration test. We made the unitary test. And that's the final entity for the product. OK, we need one more piece. We need a way to fetch these products from this external client. So we are going to wrap this into its own adapter responsible to fetch this external information. So we have here the public interface to fetch products. And that's done, right? We tested everything. So, but did you guys notice that we are hitting the API every time you run the test? So it's costly because, and we depend on the internet, and it's not something that we want to do locally, right? So how can we solve that? We can solve that by using a double. So we can create a double that will mimic the response of this external API, and then we can use it. We can stub the request. So when testing, what do we have? Uh, we have the system on the test, the, the one that we are current testing, and we have a lot of col collaborators. The collaborators help us to give the final functionality, but they are not the main source that we are testing right now. We just need some results that we can use and bu build the final, the final results. So, in that case, for the integration test, this is a, uh, this external API doesn't be to be called. So let's create our double. So what I'm going to do here, I'd like to create a fake client, and we are going to inject it. So we are mimicking the contract that we have with this API, and we are using this mimic to test, to do a test, right? So the first thing that we can do, we can configure that adding this new, new folder called support inside of the mix file. And then inside of config file, we define that. When ru running on production or when uh, running on develop, we are going to use the original one, the product client that make the real call. But when running the tests, we are going to use the fake client. Cool, and that's it. Uh, we can uh, the, those two libraries do, do almost the same, but they are um, really good libraries. And if you guys can search more about that, 
Uh, one is bypass, more it's more like using stubs, like I did here. Another one is mocks, and that validates the message if it's being, call, it's being called. And I'd also like to talk a little bit about doc tests. And it's a other really common question community. Should we use that to validate your, our code? So what is a doc test? It's a way to document your code. But at the same time, we can't use it as a, a test source. And why? Because the main reason to have the doc test is like to validate that your uh, documentation is up to date. So don't use it as a test proposal, but use it as uh, a way that you can keep your, document, um, uh, your documentation live. So in that example here, we have a, a documentation. And we have here also the, the final result, as expected. So every time you run the test, it will run the documentation and see if it's working as expected. Cool. So at the beginning, I brought this, how tests can reflect specifications and help us to build confident code. And that's our the final results. Well, write clear test descriptions, follow the specifications, think outside in, Think in a test pyramid, use stubs, or build fake clients, don't test callbacks, abstract your code into modules. So what we've we do, we done here, I've tried to introduce a little bit about uh, how we can refactor, how we can think always in test pyramid, and see in which part of the system we are touching, uh, which part of the system we are using in that moment, and then you can start testing layer by layer of your system and current to the overall quality. That's all for today. Uh, here is the presentation and also the, the app that I made for this presentation. And here uh, it was like a blog post that I, was, that I wrote when I was in Platform Attack about how to test, how to start with Elixir, if you guys want to know. In, uh, in the specification for, for the app, you, you had uh, kind of a scheduled um, job every 10 minutes to, to fetch prices. And that would be kind of problematic for, for the test. Do, do you have a specific strategy to, to test this part of the application? Yeah, in this kind of, of example here, we are testing more the internals. It was like uh, the accept, it will be a test outside, like a acceptance test, right? So in this case, what you can do, it's like mocking the result of this, this return of the Jing server. So if you mock that, you're, you're not going to have this schedule working time to time. So you can build this another fake layer for this part, just guarantee that uh, you're receiving the result back. So it's, it's one thing that you can do.